years ago, Lord Frederick Lugard amalgamated the northern and southern protectorates into present-day Nigeria. This, many believe, set the course of Nigeria as a country, as an expression of geography to have its own political pursuits. How has this house that Lugard built fared 110 years after? This is the Eastern Eye. I am Alex Obodo. Welcome to the Eastern Eye, a program that X-rays the political, social, and economic developments around us. From the British amalgamation of 1914 to the unitary constitution of 1999, according to some people, Nigeria has traversed a complex historical journey. Today, the question arises, where does Nigeria stand now? And what lies ahead on the pathway to redemption for those trapped within the union of dilemma? that the unitary Nigeria has evolved into. Tonight, I am joined by Tony Nadi Esquire. He is the Secretary General, Lower Niger Congress, LNC, and co-convener of Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination, NINAS. Tony Nadi, thank you so much for joining me tonight on the Eastern Eye. <clears throat> thank you. Welcome, viewers. All right, so I guess the first question will be, what would Nigeria have been like without the amalgamation of 1914? Uh, well, we, we, there were empires before 1914. There was the Songhai Empire, there was uh, your empire, there was, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, other formations. There was the Benin Empire that was uh, known all over the world with diplomatic missions uh, in Europe, Ishekiri, the kingdom, uh, the, the, the Wari uh, kingdom, the Shekiri, they had in the 15th century, the Shekiri already had diplomatic mission in Portugal. So we were, we were, we were not living on trees uh, like monkeys, as some people, you know, want others to believe. We were an organized society and uh, it was on account of those uh, settings in which uh, we were living that uh, the, uh, the, when the British first came, all those trading treaties they had to sign were with established kingdoms. And uh, it, it, it went from trading treaty to prote uh, protection treaties and all, all kinds of uh, deceits until they lumped everything together in 1914 and called it Nigeria without reverting back to the people uh, with whom they signed uh, you know, those, those uh, treaties. It was just a matter of swindling them of their sovereignty. That was what happened to those kingdoms. And um, today we have come to where they've managed to carry on with it for 110 years, you know, uh, turning us into slaves in our homelands, in joint venture with uh, uh, the Fulani that were coming on their own uh, conquest uh, mission from Futejalon and everywhere in between that place and uh, the Sokoto area from where they came. So we, we were just now trying to retrieve our sovereignty that uh, had been uh, detained for this uh, many years uh, in the hands of people who who now became our owners. And uh, they found, of course, uh, local uh, willing tools from all over the place and uh, managing to impose by, 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 by brigandage, imposing a constitution that now take everything, you know, in black and white. You know, uh, our, our lands, our economic assets, our rights to work those assets and everything uh, you could imagine that we make life uh, more meaningful for people. So we're, 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 we're now trapped in a union that is a fraud against us because they put our signature, uh, the preamble to the Constitution of 19. Now you ended with from amalgamation of 1914 uh, to, to Constitution of 1999. It's just a matter of uh, we're continuing in the same uh, mischief. If you go back to 1975 uh, to see, just listening to what Mutala Mohammed said, uh, uh, or the day he was inaugurating the uh, Rotimi William committee that uh, drafted uh, that's uh, Rotimi Williams and Ben Mwabeze that he brought that drafted uh, the what became 1979 constitution for him. You know, just uh, this is what I want. And then of the, 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 he, he, he got taken out in 1976, and Obasanjo carried through for him and the Caliphate, and that was what became constitution that was carried forward in 1999. So that's how. We've, we went from the British, uh, the external sovereignty of Britain, 
uh, to the internal uh, suzerainty of the caliphate, uh, of course, reinforced by the alliance of 1967. What do I mean by alliance of 1967? Uh, they managed to find uh, people. If you, if you if you go if you go to the map uh, that the the, 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 the dotting circle that the uh, uh, Buhari was uh, mocking the East uh, with, that dotting circle is so the rest of Nigeria they managed to put together for the genocide that they carried out against. Uh, the, the Igbo particularly, but they began with all the Eastern Nigeria and they began to narrow it down, you know, so that's how we got to where we are now. And uh, what Nigeria must now resolve is that sovereignty question. Do we want to be, do we want to remain in this union? Because initially everybody thought it was only the Igbo that would suffer. But today, uh, he joins crying, you see what's going on in Port Harcourt. The Middleburg is being slaughtered. Yoruba, you know, uh, uh, shouting for autonomy and all of that. Uh, forget this uh, lunatic called uh, Kwame, Kwame, Kwame Dele that was talking about uh, oh, if we now go to the general autonomy, autonomy we'll get what they are looking for. That, that, that what Kwame Dele said in that bit before October 1st is the summary, is the summary of what brought Nigeria to its grave site as a, the unitary Nigeria that's about to die. It is that what Kwame Dele said that uh, explains it all. When you take it from 1914 to where we are now, Nigeria died trying to kill the Igbo. All right. That's where we are now. All right. I, is that you Nigeria? I would just have to plead with you to uh, <laughs> just pay attention to the language. Uh, I mean, this is live TV. This is not a, well, Zoom, this is not a Zoom call. Uh, He's a senator of the Federal no, but, Republic. But, just, but yes, I'm paying attention. Yeah, I'm paying so, on the floor. Let, let me explain so it doesn't look like uh, we've traveled outside the rules. Yeah. In a Senate retreat where they were debating whether or not Nigeria should return to regional autonomy, the caliphate uh, senators, uh, the senators from the far north were saying, no, we can't go there. The senators from the south were saying, our people want that as the only way to continue in the union. Okwemi Bamidele's contribution to that debate was to say that if, uh, gentlemen, have you all forgotten yourself, if we make the mistake of going back to regional autonomy, then the Igbo will get what the Biafra they've been looking for all the while. That means we are handing them, uh, you know, Yoruba wants autonomy, ready to leave the union today if they don't get it. He told that he's talking about resource control. It is autonomy. Just that they call it by the name they could call it. The middle belt wants to be unyoked from the caliphate. So everybody is looking for how to retrieve their sovereignty. That is what is called the autonomy. To be in charge of their lives and their space. Now, choking them to death. Unitary Nigeria is choking them to death. And if their survivor is now dependent on returning, on, on recovering that sovereignty by way of autonomy, to be in charge of their lives in their spaces. And then somebody sits in some corner in Abuja saying that, oh, if we do that now, uh, Igbo will then uh, become autonomous, they get the autonomy they've been fighting for. That's what he said there. And that's why I say he must be out of his mind to be saying so. All right, but, the rest of the country. The but let me ask this. Is stuck. But let me ask this so that we can put it to rest. If, if yes. the original autonomy is granted, Will it grant Ndibo what they are looking for? Perhaps, if that is what Ndibo is looking for. Is, the, that, the, is, the that, a solution, is, that, is that a solution no, no, to no. the problem? The, 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 the language of grant is wrong. The sovereignty of the Igbo, just like that of the Yoruba and the Ijo and the Tif, belongs to them. It's inalienable. It is, it is the constituent components that will form a union. That's why the, the preamble to the Constitution says, we, the peoples of the Federal Republic, having firmly and solemnly resolved to live in unity, do hereby make and give unto ourselves the following constitution. It is the constituent component that will form a union you call Nigeria, bringing their lands and their peoples. And so, when you talk about grants, by who? These are, these, these are illiterate, these are the people who are uh, talking of it in terms of uh, devolution of power, you know, they sit on the pinnacle of uh, some evil pyramid and they are talking down on the owners of the enterprise. Where we are now is that, yes, that autonomy, but it's not by them, it's not them granted. The starting point in that discussion, before they begin to talk about what yeah. emerge from what we are rejecting, yes. the starting point is that the constitution by which Nigeria is currently convened, That's right. by which Nigeria is currently defined, by which Nigeria is currently governed, 
and manage. So it's if, a fraud and a scam. Okay, so if it's I understand, if I understand well, your, it, sorry, uh, no, uh, uh, apologies for let's, interrupting you. If I understand yes. your drift, your your yes. uh, your argument is that uh, that he, he he doesn't have the authority to grant anything. That's that's the point. Y yes, it okay. is it is illiteracy. It is illiteracy on the subject that will that will that will make anybody suggest that he wants to grant us autonomy. All right, great. We are so we can so, do with that. With, we are saying that. So for, for, for where we are now, so that we can maximize time. So, sorry, so, sorry, sir. So we can maximize time because there's obviously a lot we need to cover. There are people right. watching this program who don't have the background of where your argument is coming from. So when you are yeah. referring to the owners of Nigeria, who are these people you are referring to? The constituent components. The, 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 the Nigeria you're talking about, again, I refer you back to the preamble to the Constitution of Nigeria. The Constitution is the, is the Union Charter. That is a document that makes me a member of this union today. If Nigeria was not occupying Igbo land, I would be in charge of my land and how I manage it. You will be in charge of their land and how they manage it. And that being in charge is that, uh, that is, is, is the sovereignty we are talking about. Ancestral lands occupied by indigenous peoples before political arrangements were imposed on them in 1914 and carried forward by brigandage across this length of time to this date. This is the first time that the peoples of Nigeria have organized amongst themselves. If you're talking to Yoruba, Yoruba talking to Tif, Tif talking to Igbo, and all of that, that's what we have done across the last 25 years, to organize them to take back their, their portions if Nigeria is not willing to submit itself, I mean, the organizer, the, the, the enforcers of the current Nigeria. And with the instrument that is for that, that 1999 constitution that they say we made, which we didn't make, so that people can understand it. The, the remedy available to us in what we are complaining about, and when I say us, all of us, the constituent components of Nigeria, if anybody's in doubt, go to a referendum. But if you think by pointing guns at everybody, you're able to bulldoze, you are selling the oil every day, sharing the money, and no part of it is meant for anybody else. For the pointing guns at anybody, everybody. What is the definition of armed robbery other than taking what doesn't belong to you by force? Why will you put my signature on a document I have nothing to do with? I've never been I, I, any chance of discussing. You don't say, I submitted my land and my people into your union. That's what that uh, 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 constitution claims in his preamble. And we come back to the ones who swear, defend and uphold it, the ones who are governors, the ones who are senators. Everybody who has to swear to defend and uphold that constitution, everybody who goes to contest the election, whether they are PDP, they are APC, they are all committing treason against all of us. And we, we, have, we have waited for too long, since 1999, telling them that we need to slow down and go and discuss. But they are pointing guns at us, sitting in Abuja, thinking that nobody can challenge them. Whereas our sovereignty belongs to us. Our right to self-determination belongs to us. It doesn't depend on whether they agree with us or they don't. We only need to organize ourselves and take our various portions. We can go to another meeting and form another union without reference to the people, to the criminals who are, who are holding on to that respect. Crap, bigger than that. Nigeria, in fact, doesn't have any right to, to, to put anybody in prison for any kind of offense, including murder. Nigeria is murdering. Nigeria is designed to feed on the blood of its constituents today. Tell me why, why, why a country that earns as much as Nigeria earns every day will be, will be having people dying of hunger in this number. Why will a country of Nigeria's endowment not be able to, to fend for the citizens so that they are, that they are, they are running in all directions all over the world? And people sit in Abuja thinking that what can they do to us with impunity? And we can we can show you, you know, step by step, everything that has gone wrong with Nigeria. We show you the part of that constitution they imposed on us that is responsible for it. Whether it is the, the corruption we see, or the or the insecurity we see, or the or the lack of uh, electricity we see, or lack of petroleum products we see. Every one of those things have provisions that were inserted by decree, or even the share 
uh, 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 you know, uh, size of cost of governance. Cost of governance. How did we come about 812 governments that we had to finance every every day today? When Nigeria was working, it was only five governments, four regional governments and one federal government, and there was governance. But some people came by decree, fractured everything into, into 36 days, and then smuggled seven and seven local government area into it. So that every month they go to sit and share the money they've been stolen from everywhere. I don't know any other, as a lawyer, I do not know any other language to describe the entire content of Nigeria's treasury is a product of a robbery. It's a proceed, it's proceed of crime. And anybody who is willing to participate in that share, that is why we say that they are committing treason against us. That's the worst form of crime. Because they hijacked our sovereignty to now become the owners of our assets, tying our hands to the back. We can't organize our security because arms and ammunition were you know, on that exclusive list. We can't organize our electricity because it is on that exclusive list. We can't organize our infrastructure. It's on that exclusive list. And you're wondering why Nigeria has become the, the poverty capital of the world. Whereas the, 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 the ones who pretend to be governing us are the highest paid officials uh, across the world. It, it costs an average of one billion naira to maintain one member of the National Assembly. What are we doing with that kind of, what, that size of governance? And how did we come about the seven and seven local government areas that now have to be financed every, you see the madness going on in Paracon? How did the first public collapse? Was it not the election in Ibadan? Federal might and local uh, 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 weight. How did the Second Republic collapse? Was it not federal might in Ondo and local uh, weight? Here again we are, as uh, like a people who have lost their mind, like a community with no elders. But uh, this matter is discussed in terms of the, the union question. Until that union is discussed and be, it becomes our union. Today it's not. Everything everybody is doing, we are going to place them on this map you see behind me. A great token will then find out that he's from Yoruba land. The president and commander in chief is from Yoruba land. And between the two of them, they are setting fire on Portacot. That is, that is how everything everybody does. The Kekere Ekum, that is chief justice of Nigeria today, we place her on that map. She will see that she's from Yoruba land. And then she sits in Abuja and brings her boots on the map from a woeful loss in an election and makes him governor in Imo State. And then the carnage that is going on there. Everything everybody is doing from every department of government until we have this discussion and we have the Nigeria that's our union. The unitary Nigeria is not our union. The Nigeria that was our union was the Federation of Nigeria that died in 1966 when Mohammed and Co. murdered it. And so we stand still inviting all stakeholders, government, political parties, and everybody else, the nationalities, the young people who are running for their lives in all directions throughout the world. Ninas is saying where Nigeria is now. This union, this Nigeria that is defined by this constitution is not our project. And the owners of the lands that are conscripted into that union, first by Britain, and then by the decree of the mid of the Abdullah Mabaka and his co travelers in 1999, of course, initiated by Mutra Mohammed uh, since 1967, 1967. All of those who are here against their will, all of those who would have preferred to be on their own or to be in charge of their space by way of autonomy, they are going to do whatever comes within their reach to do, and Ninas is going to organize them. We have organized them sufficiently, it's just a matter of enforcement now. There's a consensus. The consensus has been built against that constitution. The consensus has been built against the enforcers of that constitution, and that will include people from all political parties, whether they have won or they are planning to contest, all of them are guilty of treason, of hanging on that constitution with all their might and preventing a discussion on this all-important subject. All right. And God well, save you. You are trying to build 
on a construction site and you have more than 75% of people, including myself, trying to dismantle, you don't have a project. All right. Let so, us go and discuss. Let us go to transition. Let good. Us have 1990. Good. And good. discuss this matter under the roof. Otherwise, people are going to take their yeah. functions on their own terms. Good, Mr. Nadi. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll find out exactly how the things you are saying, how it can materialize. Because obviously, and like we've said in the previous editions that you featured, we have a national assembly in place, and there is a constitution in place, no matter the misgivings about it. That is a 1999 constitution in place. So when we return, when we return, when we return from the break. You will yeah. tell us exactly what needs to be done by the right. owner, by the owners of Nigeria. Stay with us Thank here you. on the Eastern 